I wanted to follow up on my previous video on the the meaning of the term tradition uh, with some additional distinctions. Uh, and I spend a lot of time talking about the opposition between uh, what I will call the traditional world and the modern world. And especially because of that emphasis, I sh should say here uh, at the beginning that this is primarily a rhetorical device uh, adopted because it's helpful to illustrate certain points. And uh, I definitely don't wish to define myself, and I don't think any of the uh, traditionalist authors themselves would want to define themselves by this opposition. And nor is it even necessary uh, in order to say what I need to say. Uh, but um, it, it, it's useful because, uh, out of necessity, most readers today are modern. And uh, the, the purpose here is to show alternatives to what we tend to assume are the only way that things could be. Uh, to show that there are, is an alternative world to the world that we have, the world of meaning that we're acquainted with. And so um, when we write about, you know, the traditional world versus the modern world, it's, it's not necessarily to set ourselves apart, but also to meet readers where they are and then uh, lead in a direction uh, where we've set up an alternative. Um, and so that requires the establishment of an opposition for the simple reason um, that, again, we have to be shown that there is somewhere else that we can go, or at least an alternative point of view to adopt. And uh, it is, you know, my experience that most people I meet operate on the assumption that their way of thinking is really the only possible way, because to them it is common sense and everything else is, you know, therefore irrationality or barbarism. So if I make the modern world my opponent, um, that's, that's because it's useful, but uh, we shouldn't allow that opponent to become our center of gravity um, because at that point uh, we'd have nothing to offer but criticism. And so proceeding in that way is, is self-defeating because it means that we would then depend on the opposition that we've created in order to say anything at all. We'd have no positive words um, and no center of gravity in, in our own principles. And so if it seems like I'm belaboring that point, it's just it is it is a problem with certain reactionary groups. Uh, a lot of today's conservatism um, suffers from precisely that problem. It sort of depends on the opposition in order to have anything to say and seems to exist on, on no other platform but, uh, but opposing, you know, the other tribe. And this is also what we see in Christianity to some degree with Protestantism in general. And in fact, that's implied in the label Protestant. Uh, without Catholicism to set itself against, Protestantism would have far fewer sermons to preach, and its doctrine would almost cease to make sense because uh, a lot of the doctrine as taught presupposes an alternative Christian doctrine uh, that it is, in a sense, refuting. And so things like sola scriptura, uh, scripture alone, and Sola fide, faith alone, they only make sense if you are starting with the Catholic Church in view and trying to distinguish, distinguish yourself from the pre-existing doctrines of that tradition. And so really, anytime you allow this to happen, uh, you can become dry docked, attached to your opposition, defined by it. And in that sense, you are dependent for your identity on that which you supposedly reject. So again, we don't really wish to define ourselves as anti-modern, even though we certainly are, but that definition would make us simply reactionaries. And that's a term that we do embrace tentatively, provided it's understood as a secondary label and in a certain relationship, but not as a basis for everything else. Uh, on the contrary, we stand for certain positive principles that existed before the advent of the modern world and still exist. And 
these principles that without doubt will equip us to build a view of the world and an approach to life that can stand on its own two feet and does not require any opposition whatsoever. Uh, but since we're situated in the modern world and we live among people who think according to the modern vocabulary, it's helpful to frame the discussion as an opposition between the modern world and this something else that we wish to present. And that something else is, is what is typically by traditionals called the traditional world. Or, um, doctrinally speaking, just simply tradition, sometimes with a capital T. That's the positive ground uh, that we build up as our, as our foundation and uh, becomes the center of gravity for the doctrine. It's the same foundation that was taken for granted by all preceding civilizations aside from the modern West, and that's why we refer to those civilizations as traditional civilizations. Uh, speaking also of traditional religions, traditional peoples. Uh, in each case, we have in mind a type that is very easy to contrast with the modern version. And you'll notice that there's a multiplicity of traditional worlds, but there is only one modern world. Um, so, after offering some of those reservations in, on the use of the traditional modern distinction, um, sort of situating it in its proper place. Uh, I wanted to also make some distinctions. I, I tried to, you know, describe a little bit what the term tradition means to traditionalists in a, a previous video, and I'll go a little bit more into that. Um, because again, it, it's, it's problematic, and I don't know that there's any way around it because you have to use terms that are in usage and it's it's very obnoxious to invent completely original terminologies um, especially when your ideas aren't new and you're simply referring back uh, to something that's already been established and so if you're not going to invent obnoxious arbitrary terminologies you have to to take the words as you find them and try to make the best of it so the term tradition is somewhat pejorative today. It usually refers to any procedure or method or activity that was put in place because it worked at one time or because it made sense to someone and has continued for no other reason than we've always done it this way. In other words, tradition means for modern people the mindless repetition of something that doesn't have any reason for existing aside from habit or practicality. So this usage confuses tradition with something of a different order, uh, which would be more appropriately called convention. Conventions are arbitrary in design, utilitarian in nature, or we could even say custom, although that word is, is less familiar today than convention, but uh, you know, a couple centuries ago, custom would have been a good way of, of referring to it. They serve, customs and conventions serve some decided end, and they're acknowledged as legitimate only insofar as they continue to serve that end. In other words, they're not truths in themselves. So a modern programming language, for example, uh, follows a set of conventions. These conventions are valid within that context. And they can very quickly become superseded by new conventions that are better at achieving the ends the programmers set for themselves. So conventions only have a relative truth value. And likewise, certain behaviors and social practices can be considered conventions because they, they too were invented either by accident or with purposeful consideration only to achieve a particular goal within a particular context, and they're subject to change. What we call manners are a particular type of social convention, and again, as we know, they're only binding to a certain degree and can even become silly or harmful if overemphasized. So a convention is a thing that is arbitrary. Anyone can invent one. They're expendable, meaning they can be discarded. And they're relative. They might make sense here and now, but may not make sense tomorrow or for someone else. So given the fact that tradition is often used as a synonym for convention today in, in common usage, we can understand the disdain shown by many people toward the so-called religious traditions. Because these it is assumed in this context, 
are simply man-made procedures injected into the religion or so superimposed onto it that ought to have died out long ago that blind us to any sort of openness to the spirit. In other words, to the modern mind, traditions are conventions that stubbornly refuse to go away. And moreover, a society or a religion or a cultural group that labels itself as traditional is essentially labeling itself as one that is characterized by backwardness and a tendency to resist growth and development, clinging to obsolete habits, doing nothing more than holding people back, or poisoning the progress of religious life or civilization as a whole with discredited habits or ideas. So in sum, although in contemporary English, it is common to refer negatively to tradition. It would be more correct, based on what is usually meant, to speak of convention. And again, that's something of an entirely different order. Um, tradition, so, you know, taking that apart from convention, tradition, as we mean it in the context of traditional civilization, traditional religion, uh, is an aggregate of principles. Tradition is an aggregate of principles. And if we had to summarize the problem of the modern world as opposed to the traditional world, and we wanted to sum it up in a single sentence, we could say that the modern world has no principles. And in the absence of principles, seeks to establish itself on the basis of preferences. It likes to use the word freedom, because that sounds a little bit more lofty and abstract, but uh, I think preference is, is adequate. Everything else follows naturally from that summary. And one of the primary purposes of my, my manual, This Dark Age, and uh, my work in general is to acquaint the reader with actual principles and not merely principles of the social order, but of the metaphysical order, the absolute order. Uh, since metaphysical principles alone are supreme, and if properly grasped, they can give order to everything else, and in fact are the only thing that can do this. So, that is to say, anyone who comprehends the metaphysical will be capable of comprehending, to some extent, the political, and of passing judgment on its applications, since the higher has, a, in, a, in principle, ability to comprehend the lower. And if this sounds strange, it's really probably because the prevailing modern view maintains a confused idea of what principles are. So principles are not, uh, you know, what someone says when they say, well, I've just, it's, I'm doing it on principle, or these are my principles, which again, <laughs> could, could amount to arbitrarily chosen preferences, uh, my opinions. But principles are a result of a knowledge of reality. True principles are the result of knowledge and insight into reality. They are given, not invented, not chosen for oneself. Preferences, on the other hand, will always be somewhat arbitrary and may or may not have anything to do with objective truth or reality. In the modern world, we tend to think that freedom and equality and human rights are principles. But obviously, these are merely preferences of a certain order, the social order, or rather pseudo-principles based on a, a certain predisposition in the sense that they make sense to a certain type of humanity and would have sounded very strange to other human types throughout history. Uh, principles in the true sense, in the you know traditional principles, are more like facts about the nature of the cosmos, about the nature of reality, about the nature of man. So total reality, which would be metaphysics and physics, uh, with regard to man in his bodily, psychic, spiritual dimensions, body, mind, spirit. So to illustrate the point with a simple example, we can say that hierarchy, hierarchy is a a principle, an organizing principle. And while e equality, which is what in the modern context replaces hierarchy, which is an animating principle of traditional civilization, so equality is a preference. There is nothing in nature, in the structure of the cosmos, that, that causes us to, you know, forces us to admit equality. Um, equality is a preference that not only ignores the principle of hierarchy, but outright denies it and works against it. 
Hierarchy is an aspect of reality that is fundamental to the structure of everything we know, regardless of which order we're discussing, physical, psychic, spiritual, terrestrial, celestial. Whether the kingdom of God or the world of man, hierarchy is the rule. Equality exists only in the mind and in the Declaration of Independence. So, uh, we spent some time uh, talking about you know traditional world versus modern world, tradition versus convention, uh, traditional principles versus preferences. So, I'm going to stop there for now.